and Crime of the Century is one of those uh, albums that everybody knows. You say the name and instantly recognizable with, with Supertramp and things like that. I mean, in terms of yeah. a make or break record, it certainly made the band, didn't it? And, and put you on the yeah. path to success. It did. And it was a serious project. And I think one good, one good thing about it is, is that there's a certain enigmaticness about about the tunes, for example, a crime of the century. Yeah. And it can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. It's yeah. nothing specific. You know, it's not, I missed the 810 train and my girl's gone sort of <laughs> thing. Because that's there's only that's only about one thing, isn't it? Whereas, whereas they managed to make the, the lyrics, which I'm not great at lyrics, but they managed to make things quite enigmatic. So you can put your own meaning to a lot of the, yeah. the, the tunes. And so, you mentioned yeah. there about playing live and things. I mean, obviously, at the time, you on stage, you weren't playing the saxophone the whole time, so you're, you're doing various different things, as you said, uh, the clarinet, you were on keyboards at times, different, various different yeah. things on the stage. I mean, how did you feel um, doing that at the time? Oh, well, it was essential, really, because we'd made a, a at least 24-track, multi-track album, yeah. maybe more tracks than that, and then it's all reduced to two, you know, for the stereo. And, but then you've got to kind of rethink the tunes when you go out and try and do them live. And there was, back then, for a few years, there was just the five people yes. trying to make all the sounds. So a lot of keyboards. And then there's the, the two songwriters either playing guitar, Roger played guitar and keyboards, or Rick plays keyboards and sang. So there's all the other things to kind of fill in Mm -hmm. and, and then the saxophone lines and so i ended up being a, a not exactly a jack of all trades but <laughs> having to play keyboard string parts and all that business so it was quite interesting how we, we had to do it uh, like i'd have a note going and, and i'd be picking up my clarinet <laughs> and, and then roger would take over and keep his finger on that note and play more you know it, we, it was quite uh, interesting how we managed to do it, but we made it quite a good job of it, really, of producing that uh, complicated music just with five people. Breakfast in America there, I mean, Grammy Award nominations. Um, there was number ones all over the world, platinum discs. I think it's still one of the biggest selling records in, in French history. Mm. I mean, yes. what do you remember? Take, take us back to the recording, the, the writing, the, the whole kind of build up to this this record what do you remember about the studio and and rick and roger bringing the songs in what do you remember about this this period the main thing about this studio situation was the village recorders in west la uh, was the inordinate length of time that it took us to okay. do we were in there for about six months you know wow. <laughs> building everything up in pieces knocking them down again and then building them up it took nearly a week to get the drum sound oh, wow and so all, all we heard for like a week of going doom, doom, doom. And we had a very pernickety sound man, mem sixth member of the group, Russell Polk. So it took us ages to get all the sounds right. And uh, anyway, we eventually pulled it, pulled it together. But it, it's it, like pulling teeth in the end. It just took so long. But, <laughs> but it worked in the end. We, we managed to, to make it sound good. And it was different from uh yeah. say uh, a crime of the century it was different it was more just like a collection of songs and they sounded somehow they sounded better on the radio it, it the mix worked in a sort of hi-fi way but it also worked on singles yes and people listening on little speakers somehow that was the that was the engineer pete henson that uh, that was very instrumental in getting as that type of sound. <laughs> um, and then moving on again a few years, um, when Roger decided to, to call it quits and leave the band, I mean, given the success that you'd had up to that point, I mean, how did that feel when, when that came around? Um, it seemed inevitable knowing him because uh, we'd had to um, almost tie him up and keep him, keep him there when we were recording uh, Prime of the Century. He wanted to go to India. <laughs> when we were rehearsing for crime of the century so we persuaded him to stay so we kept persuading him to stay through the 70s uh and that but eventually he he wanted to uh, be able to get more music out and do his own thing or whatever so he did in 83. so the thing was there was the, there was the big breakfast in america explosion and then there was a massive tour 79 and then 
there was there was only one more studio album and then Roger left and and we decided that we would do a, a tour and it was quite a big tour uh, open air gigs in Europe yeah. especially and uh, that was kind of Roger's farewell 1983 uh, and so the feeling was well it, he's got to do it what shall we do the other guys in the band and we all said well we'd, we'd love to be able to just stay on with Rick and and carry on with, with Supertramp. So it was just a, a decision like that. <laughs>